What's up everybody, welcome back to Make It Custom. I'm Carl Fisher and today I'm gonna to show you guys how I made this radius tool to do inside and outside turning on my lathe out of scrap metal I found in my bin. Let's do it together right now on Make It Custom. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. Let's get into it. Okay, we are in full swing mother tucker hammer production. <laughs> Matt's here making his own mother tucker hammer and helping me out make a few extras for the class coming up. And uh, right now I'm just kind of etch a sketching the radius on this nylon and thinking to myself, I remember I used to have a plan to try and make a little radius tool for this. So um, 
you know, I think I'm just gonna try it right now. I'm just gonna wing, I'm just gonna wing it. I'm gonna make a pivoting, adjustable little radius tool that'll do this radius and the tighter radius here. So something that just adjusts in and out that can have a center in the center of here that somehow clamps into this. I've never made one before, so that's just kind of what I'm thinking. But uh, this is gonna be quick and dirty. I'm gonna try and make it, you know, in the next 20 minutes if I can. Well, that escalated quickly. You look at, I took apart my whole lathe now. Stuff's never been apart, but I'm trying to figure this out. And me and Matt were talking, we're just taking more and more stuff apart, trying to fix, you know, this is the tool post, normally goes here. And uh, basically we're trying to get a working area that's low enough to start building off with a pivot for this. So getting ahead of myself, I'm gonna show you. I didn't, uh, I didn't show myself getting all this apart but it all just comes apart you undo this all the way and then it just slides off um i undid these screws and then this just slid out and now it's staying apart because i'm going to clean it you know i might as well clean it right now so this will go back on and then i'm going to make some kind of pivot from inside this to this so that it's centered underneath kind of like that and then I'll put a um, like a set screw here to tighten onto this so that we can move this back and forth. I might hog some of this out and put a flat piece in there so that this gets clamped down on a flat. I think that's important. But I'm trying to use scrap from the from the um, from the bin over there. So this is actually material from making the bead rollers. You might even recognize these pieces. These were spaced for the for the shafts and the gears. They just didn't get finished machining. And I ended up going with cold rolled material that's a little bit higher tolerance than this hot rolled stuff that has the mill scale on it. So it's already got a hole in there. I think it's about a half inch hole or maybe a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna probably end up sliding this back on. And pretend this center is directly centered underneath that. I'll make an adapter, machine it, that goes from this to that so that it pivots. Oops, I mean this. So that it can pivot like that. Remember, it'll be right underneath there. And then I'll have this piece holding onto this at the center height of the chuck when it's all together. And then that way I'll be able to move this in or out to change the radius. It's supposed to be kind of easy and dumb, so that's just what I'm gonna do.
All right, so this is kind of what I got going on. This piece, I just finished welding up. This is just scrap steel from the bin kind of thing. Um, just take welded these two pieces together with a, uh, a channel that was milled into there so that we've got a slot for the tool to go in and out. I've got threaded holes. They're not perfect because I didn't even measure them. Like I'm just trying to do this quick. So I just drilled and tapped three quick set screws into a piece of steel and, and welded it on the top. And you saw I actually stuck a couple pieces of uh, rod in here and kind of weaved it over because this needed to be raised up a little bit for the tool to slide through. So I'm just kind of like trying to do this as quickly as I can here. But what I'm thinking about now is the tool rest itself. Um, like this piece and how it attaches to this. I was kind of thinking about having a bolt that went through and, and, and sandwiched it in. But the nice thing about this is that... Ooh, that was really hot. Um... It's got these adjusters, and these adjusters have a taper on them, and then a flat top, and when you push them in, they tighten this down, pressing like flat onto this. So if I was to mimic the piece, like the male piece that fits in here that is my tool post, then these adjusters would be relevant. Like I'd be able to use those adjusters, the factory, it'd be like made for this lathe. So. Um, that's what I think I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna grab a piece of material. This is uh, this is what we machine our dies out of. It's just like S7 tool steel. So I'm gonna chop a piece off of that. And basically I'm gonna make this profile in it and just weld it to the bottom of my little tool. And then this should hold itself in place with the factory little lathe pieces. So uh, that's what I'm thinking anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that next. And, uh, and then we can try this out. It is taking longer than 20 minutes. It always takes longer than 20 minutes. Right, Matt? Always. 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 Double it and then triple it. Yeah. <laughs>
All right, let's have a look at this tool. I do really like the way it turned out. Um, just like I was kind of saying, it goes in and locks in with these factory little nubbins. Oh, it doesn't, it's not quite all the way out, hold on. See that? I sort of turned it to be the same as the base, like that. That's why it works, that's why it locks in. So um, it would be cool if it just bolted onto here and kind of did its little drop down so that you wouldn't have to undo it every time, but it's really not that hard. Like it's just, it's just these two pops right off, pop this guy right on. And I am actually, instead of using these to allow it to spin, I am locking these tight, all the way tight. Um, let me just, hold on, holding the camera funny while I do it. So I'm locking these in tight and then allowing it to use the bronze bushing for the pivot. And uh, you know, it, it does sometimes grab this little um, bolt here and, and spin it to tighten it or loosen it. So what my actual plan is, I was just getting impatient, I was rushing. Um, my actual plan would be to, uh, to weld a piece of ready rod in here and then have a nylock nut with like a thick washer so that you can set the pressure more or less and it's locked on with a nylock nut. But this did work just fine. Like we got all the pieces made. But um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, it's a relatively simple setup. I didn't really look at anything as to figure out the design. This is just kind of what I felt in my head was necessary to, to make a tool like this. I have seen these tools before, don't get me wrong. I just didn't look at one and try and copy it because I've just got a bunch of scrap steel. It would have complicated things in my head. So um, yeah, it works It works really good. And, uh, and as I adjust this closer to the center, that is the radius, you know? So if I want a three quarter inch radius, it's you know directly from the center, three quarter inches away, and there it is. Um, I did notice that I do need to shim this up a little bit, but I did give myself room. I've got about a hundred thou clearance to shim this up to be dead center in the uh, in there. So, you know, I, I went a little further than I was originally gonna go. I thought that I could just make like a, um, a half-ass one that 
just worked good enough for the plastic nylon because it's not hard to cut, but this one is actually beefy enough that it can cut steel and do a nice job. I even rounded the tip of this handle. That was the first thing I, I used the radius uh, tool for, so this is an easy tool to get. Anyway, pretty happy with it. Did take longer than I thought, but I mean, proof is in the pudding. Check out these hammers. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna get these manufactured by a CNC, but you know, Matt and I made what four hammers, yep. and uh, and yeah, they turned out wicked. So worth it. Oh, yeah. There we go. See that? How the nut's not moving. Nice smooth, decent amount of friction on it. No chatter. All right, well that's it for this episode of Make It Custom, everybody. I really wanna thank you guys for supporting the channel and, uh, and continuing to come back and watch these videos and interact with me. I really do appreciate the community that is happening around this channel. I really enjoy seeing all that positivity in the comments and how everybody's kind of moving along on their projects. And, and those are the best messages that I can get. I get them, you know, you know, if I'm lucky enough to get them daily, I get them daily where I see people that have gone, you know, further than they thought they could on their project because they've seen something in a video and uh, guys are giving me suggestions for videos and all sorts of things. So I just, I really appreciate all of it because uh, I enjoy what I'm doing and it's because of you guys. So if you haven't already, don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. And if you want to support the channel in another way, there's the custom crew membership. It's $5 a month. And uh, basically what that does is it gets you a badge by your name. It makes you a little bit more searchable in the comments and uh, gives you 15% off on the merch store, which is japhandscustoms.com. Um, yeah, very grateful everybody. Thank you so much. I'm gonna get back on the Zephyr in the next video. We're gonna hammer out some quarter panels. And then I'm really excited to announce that I will be uh, pulling my brother's 1959 Buick in the shop and we are going to do full hydraulics on this car um, It's something I've been wanting to do for a while is just kind of have a work party on something of my brother's He helps a lot of guys out and uh, we all kind of do that for each other And that's what makes you know the car community so great is that um, You know our friend group if somebody needs help on a car like we, we try our best to help everybody out and uh, and I think that's really important to kind of surround yourself with people that that uh, all kind of come together. So we're gonna do that on my brother's 59 Buick. It's kind of like a birthday deal almost because it's at the end of uh, January, which is gonna be his birthday. So um, anyway, hopefully you'll join us for that. Um, we've got Hoppo's Hydraulics on board. 
for that as well. Uh, I'd like to shout out them. They actually came and uh, they're supplying us with a kit to do this for my brother. And we're going to show you guys how to install hydraulics, you know, start to finish, front to back, from a totally stock car driving into driving out. We're going to build this lowrider in three days. So that's coming up as well. We'll check you next time on Make It Custom. See you later.